Uh, Richard, uh, thanks very much for talking to me. We're talking about the film yesterday, obviously. Yeah, I want to um, talk about the enemy. Well, <laughs> um, my <laughs> mum never understood it. She always thought it was enemy, E N E M Y. And every week I'd say, "Will you get me a copy of Enemy when you go down to Smiths? Will you do this? Will you do that?" Enemy. I read every single um, magazine for probably about a seven-year period. Well, funny enough, another person who does think it's enemy is Ed Sheeran. He's got a lyric that says, "I've only got one enemy, and it's the enemy." Oh, which is, yeah. Cool. We, but well, we, I hope we, you'll change your mind now that you've seen him act. <laughs> well, one thing about the—I uh, know you're quite close with Ed. You don't give him an easy time in this film, do you? Which is quite no. Funny. He must be teased um, <laughs> because of the fact he's had so much success um, and still hasn't cut his hair. But no, he gives a great performance in the film. As much as it seems like, a, as much as it is a film about the Beatles, it's kind of Ed's story as well. You know, we've got someone into sort of East Anglia, uh, kind of gifted with all these songs, and quite an unassuming person who then becomes. Yeah, but also the curve of the romantic film, because Ed is now, you know, married to or getting married to Cherry, who he yep. knew at school. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. And so he kind of gave me the confidence that a story of someone who becomes the biggest star in the world, and yet he'd still, as it were, find love at home. So we got uh, you, this is you and, and Danny Boyle coming together. So uh, you were kind of the, the king of the Britcom at the time when Danny was making sort of edgy indie movies. This is yeah. a real kind of, if you'll pardon the Beatles pun, coming together of yes. like two, two, two giants in, in British cinema. Did you expect it to work out as well as it has? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think there's enormous similarities, by the way, between Train Spotting and Four Weddings, which we brought out at the same time, two bunches of friends. Just um, a little less heroin in one of them. Yeah, our heroine was Andrew Dow. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, look, I know uh, Danny is a person, and not only is he a huge Beatles enthusiast, but he's a kind of lovely, enthusiastic, and in some ways quite romantic man. So uh, rather than looking at the films, which I loved for all their direct and skill, I kind of looked at the man and thought he'd have exactly the right heart to do it. Um, the Beatles, this is a real love letter to the Beatles, this film, and to their songs. Did, did you kind of feel a great responsibility to when, when you get the permission to use these songs yeah. in this film? You're kind of the, the steward of them for a little while, aren't you? Well, only for a little while. You yeah. know, nothing can damage the Beatles. They are, as it were, the Everest of, <laughs> of music. So I'm not going to, I'm just a little tent parked on the lower <laughs> slopes that looks pretty in for a moment or two. With some dead bodies on the way up, if we'll extend that metaphor, because there's never been a great Beatles biopic yes, yet. But might you kind of go on and make one? Well, of course, I think Hard Day's Night is an amazingly great film. So as yeah. know, the films have been represented beautifully. Um, I don't know. I mean, we found another way around it. One of the problems with biopics tends to be that they sort of start humble, move into drugs and alcohol, um, and then end with a final, with a final singing of a song with someone broken, um, and that's not the story of the Beatles or what I want to tell. Quite true, and and your your hero kind of is a lovely, humble person all the way through, yeah. pretty much as well. So uh, it also strikes me this could really kind of transfer to the West End. You know, we could we could have yesterday the musical. Do you think so? Well, you must think so. Okay. Surely. You know. Well, I don't know. We'll wait and see. But you can <laughs> you can write it. I'm quite busy. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, and uh, just to finish off, obviously a lot of our audience are young that have come to Love Actually later. It's become a real millennial classic in a way. Are, are you getting a lot of pressure from young people, like, you know, sort of friends of children and everything, to, to make a sequel? Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make a sequel uh, because we only got through by the skin of our teeth. You should have seen that movie like three months before it was released. So, no, I... I can I do one set at Easter with lots of chocolate? Why the hell not? There we are. That's, that's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Well, no, and, great and to see you.